Good afternoon, Professor Alban. Hello. It's so nice to be here. Good. Um, so you're a behavioural ecologist. Um, I was wondering if you could just tell us briefly what, what, what a behavioural ecologist does. Well, I'm interested in behaviour from the standpoint of how it uh, helps animals in survival and reproduction, basically, in their natural lives, uh, in the wild in particular. And so individual behaviour and group behaviour and the mechanisms that affect behavior, so, and then the consequences of behavior. So it's behaviors at the core, and then all these other factors in their lives uh, feed into that. Okay, um, and which animals in, in specific uh, do, you, do you look at? So I've, I've done almost all my work on baboons, which are uh, among the largest of monkeys, and uh, fairly unusual in that they live on the savannas rather than up in trees. They sleep up in trees, they occasionally feed in trees, but they uh, live a life uh, somewhat as one would find elephants and giraffes and lions doing out on the African savannas. Okay, um, so is this the Amboseli baboon project? Um, so that's what our project is. Baboons are interesting in that they've probably been now been studied more than uh, any other primate species uh, at a number of sites. And because baboons are more widespread than any other primate except humans, uh, they've been studied uh, from forests to uh, savannas, uh, very riverine situations up in mountains, and um, from Ethiopia down to the uh, uh, tip of South Africa. Okay, um, and so what, what have you been learning from the, from the Baboon Project? Um, kind of what have the main results mm -hmm. been? Well, I think one of the uh, exciting kinds of things is how plastic they are in their behavior, how adaptable. And so unintentionally, 40 years ago, we didn't imagine that we were going to be studying things like climate change and habitat change. Uh, as most people know, uh, over these past 40 years, there have been a lot of changes in the environment. And it's been interesting to see which primate species and how adapt rather than go under in those circumstances. And so we've learned uh, the kinds of things that they do behaviorally in those circumstances. I think one of the other uh, really interesting things has been uh, learning how important dads are uh, in primate society, because okay. uh, and particularly baboon society, because that was totally contrary to theory. And, uh, and it, it was only when uh, we could do genetic analysis, and my main collaborator, Susan Alberts, does that in her lab, uh, that we were able to confirm that, in fact, dads matter, uh, yeah. which was not thought to be true in these uh, societies of many males and many females living together. Was it seen that mothers were the most important? Well, and mothers certainly are very important. Um, there's a term called uh, mat being matrilocal, and uh, uh, many mammals are in that uh, when uh, kids grow up, it's the females who stay home, if it will, and the males that go out in the world uh, to other groups. And so, uh, like elephants, a very maternally based society uh, develops. And also, researchers know and assume that the uh, uh, youngsters know who the mother is, and it was assumed that uh, nobody knew who dad was. So. Okay. Um, so the dads, the dads sometimes are the stay-at-home dads, a little bit like in, in our societies. I, the well, not, they rarely take a, a major role, but what we've learned is uh, that, in fact, they intervene in fights among kids. Uh, they hang around uh, near them, and the kids can sometimes get scraps of food from them. Uh, all the, and uh, th the longer that dads stay in the group and don't migrate on into other, into other groups, the earlier that the kids mature. And so not only uh, do dads do things that we can identify, uh, but the, some of those things have con positive consequences for the kids. Uh, so not the major caregivers, no. but certainly not something to be written off. <laughs> okay, well, that's a message for the dads. <laughs> um, so moving on to the subject of your lecture today, um, beauty and attraction. Um, so could you tell us a little bit about what you were going to talk about? Well, I'm, I'm going to talk briefly about uh, how humans react to different species, how uh, 
which species we seem to be attracted to and which repulsed by, despite apparently similar behavior. And uh, then sort of zoom in on, uh, well, what happens about within a species. There are these uh, sort of species biases, if you will. Uh, but then uh, what seems to be attractive to animals within species? And how do we as know about it? And what kinds of things do we even look at? Just like the assuming dads didn't matter. Uh, what what uh, traits do we, we tend to look at? What do traits seem to matter to them? And uh, are there some surprises in, in that? Okay. Because um, at least with humans, I, I think you look for looks and personality. You look for a combination of both. Um, do baboons, do they also have a, an awareness of personalities? Do they find personalities attractive? Well, um, it's whether it's personalities, um, which people usually think of as more than behavior, uh, but I think it's a good thing to say, consistent behavior. They certainly react differently to animals who are just consistently aggressive uh, or those who are, uh, do nice things like uh, groom and develop reciprocal grooming uh, relationships. So that certainly is one of the kinds of things they look at. But it's also interesting you mentioned looks and personality. We have lots of other senses, and yet we tend to uh, focus on the, the looks and, and assume and, and investigate uh, animals' uh, attention to visual signals. But in fact, there uh, uh, are interesting things going on with voice, with sound, um, in us and in other animals. And um, I think pretty uh, relatively uninvestigated, certainly for humans and, and non-human primates, are, are other senses such as olfactory and, and tactile. Uh, such as the grooming that I mentioned. Uh, so uh, there are this range of senses, and are they all less important than visual, or is it that we're so visual and, and think of our own visual uh, reactions that we focus on those? Well, I, I certainly missed them, didn't I? Um, and what about the other way around? Do, 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 you, do you think animals find certain humans attractive? Do you think there are certain carers, say, in the, in the baboon project that the baboons seem to like more? Well, I think from laboratory studies, and when one talks to zookeepers and people in, in laboratories, one has a lot more sense of that than uh, from our project, because actually one of the goals in our project is to be the most boring primate in the, in the habitat. And so we do lots of things when we train students and as we observe uh, to keep from being a source of uh, reaction and, and interaction. And so while I would say yes, and there are little vignettes and moments when uh, that's, that's clear, and it's clear certainly that when we're not successful and there's somebody out who um, does get a lot of their attention, it tends to be attention that makes them nervous and, and that, they that they avoid. Uh, but we really do try not to, uh, in give occasions to get much insight on, on that. Okay, brilliant. Well, best of luck for the research for the future, and thanks for talking thanks to us. Thanks a lot. It was good talking to you. Thanks.